This was a vital match for both sides. Neither could afford a slip-up, having suffered defeat on match day two. Scotland, looking to bounce back from a loss in Paris, were captained for the first time in the championship by John Barkley. They made five changes from the team beaten by France. Wales made one change from the team who lost to England, with George North returning from injury to replace Alex Cuthbert. Thank you. It was Scotland who started on the front foot, and eventually possession and territory paid off when Finn Russell was presented with an easy kick from close range. Having missed a tap over against France in Paris, there was no mistake from the Scottish out half this time, and Byrne Cotter's men had an early lead. Wales were looking for a tenth win in a row against Scotland, and a Lee Halfpenny penalty on 12 minutes levelled the scores at three points apiece. Then, just past the midway point in the first half, the Welsh struck. Quick thinking from Rhys Webb, who found Bigger, to Williams, and then Halfpenny, before Liam Williams had plenty of space out wide to glide over for the first try of the match. Another score for the man from Scarlets, who'd also notched tries against Italy and England. He's moving to Saracens next season, and what an asset he should be for them. Halfpenny landed his superb conversion to give Wales a 10 points to 3 lead with 23 minutes on the clock. Shortly after that, Wales went close again with another sharp break from Webb, who found the elusive Williams outside him. His pace saw him race away. The Scots were struggling to put him to ground, and he almost found Rob Evans in support, but play was halted. And on review, Webb was found guilty of pulling Tommy Seymour back, having passed to Williams. Scotland got the penalty, but another warning of how dangerous the Welsh attack could be. Scotland had a little flurry of excitement themselves, when Stuart Hogg chipped over Halfpenny and chased it down, but the Welsh number 15 remained calm under pressure and saved the situation for the men in red. Hogg cheekily claimed a try, but the smile on his face told that his appeal was very much more in hope than in anticipation. Scotland did, however, reduce the margin to four points when Russell found the target with another well-struck penalty to leave it Scotland six, Wales ten. The Scots came into the game with just one win over Wales in 13 meetings and on 33 minutes, Ryan Wilson was penalised for holding on. Halfpenny extended the visitors' lead to seven points, 13 points to six. The fullback coming up trumps for Wales. Five minutes later, he had another chance with the boot, but he pushed his kick right. A let off for Scotland, and the Welsh lead remained seven points. Just before the half time break, the home crowd were off their feet as Tommy Seymour collected Hogg's grubber kick before feeding inside to Hugh Jones. It took a superb tackle from Justin Tipperick to halt his progress, and no score accrued. There was one more score, however. Russell with the last kick of the half between the posts and left at Scotland 9, Wales 13 at the interval. Scotland perhaps a little fortunate to be only four points down at the break, but they started the second half in lightning fashion. A beautiful move involving Hogg, the dummy run from Jones, and then a lovely pop pass from Visser to the onrushing Seymour, who did well to get over in the corner. Referee John Lacey referred to the TMO for confirmation that Seymour had got it down before being bundled into touch. Unfortunately for the Scots, the Glasgow man did get the ball down despite the best efforts of Scott Williams to deny him. Russell was left with a difficult conversion, but he just about got it over the bar with the help of the upright, and Scotland were back in front, 16 points to 13. The Scots were seeking a fourth win in a row at BT Murrayfield. They stretched their lead when Russell landed another penalty for 19-13. But on 57 minutes, Wales came agonisingly close to their second try of the game. After a scruffy scrum from the Scots, the ball squirted out. Webb was alert and darted for the line. He got the ball down. A question for the TMO. Was he in touch before he dotted down? And unfortunately for the Welsh... The pictures proved that Tim Visser had done just enough to save Scotland with a tremendous last-ditch tackle. Yeah. 
from Hero in defence. Visser then turned Hero at the other end of the pitch as well. A quite beautiful score from the Scots. Stuart Hogg's quick hands to find Visser on the wing, crucial. And the Harlequins winger was over for the try. The only Dutch-born player in the championship was having quite a day. And another Russell conversion left Scotland 26-13 ahead. Having already beaten Ireland at home, the Scots look set to take another scalp here. The time running out for the Welsh. RBS man of the match, Russell was having a perfect afternoon off the tee. And when he added another three points, seven minutes from time, the lead was out to 16 points, 29-13. And the fans could start to relax and maybe even practice their dancing moves. Even Russell could afford a smile. And if my lip reading is up to scratch, Coach Cotter felt that that was very important. Wales were unable to mount a serious threat to the Scottish line in the closing few minutes. And having outscored the Welsh 20 points to no score in the second half, Scotland could celebrate a second win in this year's championship with a game away to England to look forward to. Scotland's first win in a decade over Wales. Welsh hopes of championship success look dashed with this defeat. They host Ireland next time. At BT Murrayfield it finished Scotland 29, Wales 13.